So now, this is the first ever episode podcast of the first inning. I'm the BX Bomber, along with Roger, the big Yankee fan, and this is the first inning. Say hello, Roger. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good to talk to you, Frank. Good to talk to you, BX Bomber. Everything is going good. I'm down here in West Virginia, but I was just up in the New York City area visiting with you, and I went to some uh, Yankee games, and everything is going good. So, um, so how big of a Yankee fan are you, Roger? Oh, my goodness. I would say that I have uh, been a Yankee fan since uh, my grandfather uh, brought me to my first Yankee game when I was five years old, the year that I was going into kindergarten. And uh, he brought me to what was known as Mickey Mantle Day. Wow. And uh, Mick, Mickey Mantle had just uh, retired, and uh, he brought me to Yankee Stadium that day. And uh, since then, I've been a Yankee fan through the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, right up to today, and have uh, many, many Yankee memories throughout the decades. Wow, man, that's awesome, man. I- I'll tell you one thing. I can't even remember my first Yankee game. that so many I've gone to. You know, in yeah. the old in the old stadium, you know, but exactly. um, it's like the old stadium is like it's like a dream or something, right? Like, like I, I can't explain it. Like, it never happened or something. <laughs> well, uh, well, the old Yankee Stadium for me, uh, I remember uh, quite a bit. It uh, it closed down in 1973. I was nine years old, and from five years old to nine years old, I was going to the old Yankee Stadium. And I remember the big posts that they had that held the upper deck up. They were big poles holding the upper deck up and uh, connecting down to the main level. And there were a few times where I had seats and the pole was obstructing my view. Wow. And uh, and they had the old scoreboard uh, with the Valentine beer uh, advertisement and the concourses were rather narrow, but the yeah. dog was going around uh, the top of Yankee Stadium at that time. That's the way it is on the new stadium now. And the facade was made of copper at that time. And then it closed in 1973 and was refurbished and reopened in 1976. Yeah, that's and I right. Have many, many memories from, seven, from, from the refurbished stadium. And, um, and the old, check this out, the old stadium, 20 years ago, 1998, me and my best friend from school, uh, we was like, we told my dad, like, yo, we want to go to World Series. We're going to get tickets. We're going to stand online. And check this out. He he used to work in the Bronx house. That was a jail, like, a few blocks away from Yankee Stadium. I don't know uh-huh. if you remember that. But the line, we um he took me to work. He, he worked there, so he took me to work with him to get online. And that was about 5.30 in the morning we got there. And the line was all the way to the front of the jail, okay? Oh, my goodness. I'm talking about from the ticket line, it wrapped around to Jerome Avenue, all the way to River Avenue, down River Avenue, all the way to the jail. (laughs) Yo, unbelievable. And check this out. It was a lottery, okay? And me and my buddy, we we, we got the lottery uh, number, a band. And they did the lottery, and we were like, 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 in the fortieth thousandth place or something like that. And we was able to get, uh, we got a game two ticket, and we saw them win with El Duque in the '98. Wow, nineteen ninety-eight was a great year for the Yankees. They had one hundred twenty-five wins that year, one hundred fourteen in the regular season and eleven in the postseason, and were were one of the most dominating Yankees. Of all time, many consider the 1927 Yankees, the 1939 Yankees, uh, the 1961 Yankees, and the 1998 Yankees. Some of the best of uh, the history of the Yankees. Uh, sure. The 98 team was a very historic yeah. team with their glorious manager. And, and, and this, is, and, and listen to this: when we get to the bleachers, right? Check this out. <laughs> this is how wild the bleachers were. I mean, I don't. We didn't watch the game. I mean, we were—I mean, we were 15, partying with grown men. They were smoking weed. They were buying my best friend beer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, oh my goodness! I mean, my 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 father was like on the other side of the bleachers doing his own thing. 
We were on the other side of the bleachers with other people. Uh, yo, it was a total animal party in this bleachers, man. Yo, especially when um, I think uh, Bernie uh, or Posada hit the first home run to make it like one zip or two zip. Oh, forget that from there, it was like straight partying, man. It was like, oh, man. Never, ever that would be like that again. Oh, yes. Well, I, uh, you know, throughout the 80s and everything, I um, had did my fair share of uh, drinking and having beers at Yankee Stadium. But uh, I'm uh, clean and sober now and have not uh, drank for 14 years, but still enjoy going to Yankee Stadium and just having some sodas and some water. But uh, I had my fair share of uh, beers and going over to Philly Sports Bar and all that sort of thing, too, during uh, during uh, the 80s and uh, late 70s. I was a teenage drinker, but uh, I have chilled out now and uh, sober now, but still enjoying the Yankees. So that's 20 years now. 20 years now, we got the, I think we have the greatest team in Yankee history, man. I, I believe that, man. Because uh, 98 was the greatest team of all time. 98. Yeah. You know, I, and this team, man, I, I've I've never seen them gel like this ever before, man. You know, and, right. and 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 these players, they have a lot of heart now, man. We didn't have this before ten years ago, or even five years ago, with the Jeter and the A Rod. They didn't have, yeah, they had the clutch, but it, the heart wasn't there. You know what I mean? Like, did they? Well, what it was was uh, a few years ago. They they had a team that was built a lot around a lot of free agents, and they also had an older team players uh, players in their thirties. And uh, now they have a young team with a lot of uh, players that have been called up in the minor leagues, and they're Absolutely. building they're building their team from within and making a lot of uh, true trades and developing their players. Where a few years ago they had would have Mark Teixeira and A-Rod and Carlos Beltran and quite a number of free agents that were older players. And uh, they were decent teams that lost in the playoffs. And then they had a playoff drought in 13 and 14 and then in 16 again. But uh, this young team looks very good and very strong. And I've even heard Bernie Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders listen to me politics. Uh, Bernie Williams, uh, um, uh, mention the fact that he can uh, compare this uh, 2018 to the 1918. Absolutely, man. So, so, so it is with the Yankees trading. Wait, I, I believe they got a deal for Huff, right? From the guy from Toronto. Oh, I have not heard yet. I have not uh, checked on the computer. Uh, I but, think uh, I think there's a rumor where he actually might be coming to the Yankees. Uh, Huff from um, the Blue Jays. They have, yes. I think, I think they might need, uh, I don't know if they're going to confirm it, or maybe he has to take a physical or something. I don't know yet, but that's right. in the works, I believe. Well, many people feel that uh, the Yankees uh, need another pitcher. I like the idea of Justice Sheffield, actually. Uh, Justice Sheffield or Chance Adams are still younger pitchers that might not be ready to come up to the majors. But uh, many people feel that they need to have another pitcher to go along with Severino. So there has been uh, rumors to talk about Jay Happ coming to the Yankees again. Now, if the Yankees are crazy like I am, right, um, I personally would bring these guys up to the bullpen. Right. And, and, and start using them, man, and, and, and start taking their tolls on them now and, and, try, to, and try to carry the bullpen to the postseason kind of not tired, you know what I mean? Like, more comfortable, you know, because... Yeah, you keep them in the uh, bullpen, give them some experience. Uh, Justin Sheffield, Chance Adams, bring them out of the bullpen and give them some innings and give them some major league experience. Yeah, because um, Aaron Boone, man, um, I don't have a problem with this guy managing. I, I Have you? I, I, I haven't... I, I haven't had a problem with him yet, <laughs> you know. And, no, uh, uh, he's he's well. He's been given a very talented team to work with, first of all, and he has a very talented team to work with. And uh, many feel that Joe Girardi 
was a bit uptight with the players last year, and they feel that Aaron Boone might have a better relationship with the younger players, and that is one of the reasons that they did not renew Joe Girardi. And Aaron Boone is also media savvy and very good with the media, and uh, and he's uh, good with the younger players, and I believe that's why they made the move, uh, changing from Girardi to Aaron Boone. It's like, it's like Joe Torre all over again. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes, Joe Torre was really good. He's 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 coming in on a limb, just like him. He has a hell of a pitching coach there, Rothschild. That guy's awesome, man. Yeah. I mean, yes. the way he turned around that pitching staff from Tanaka and all these guys is amazing, man. People don't give him a lot of credit. That guy, man. That guy is awesome, man. He's the he's the He's the new Mel Stoudemire. Yes, exactly. Mel Stoudemire was a outstanding pitching coach. And Mel Stoudemire came up with the Yankees as a rookie in 1964 and pitched as a rookie in the 1964 World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals and was part of the Yankee family for many, many years. Now his son is a pitching coach. And then you got the batting coach, Marcus Times. Yes, and Marcus Payne, also Tame. a Yankee for quite a number of years. Yeah, as well. he was a hell of a third baseman too, and that guy is doing a hell of a job as a batting coach. Man, I never would have thought he's doing better than the last guy, and the last guy is very good too. Exactly, exactly. But once again, the coaches are as good as their players, and the Yankees have a lot of very young, talented players with a lot of upside. And as it is a uh, very talented team, uh, unfortunately for the Yankees, the Red Sox are having a heck of a season as well. So they have quite a battle going on in the American League East, and we could end up with a 100-win team that has to play a wild card game. That's my problem, because right now, the Yankees are only three and a half games behind. And you know, to, to get back into first place with these guys... That might take a whole month or two months to get back into first place. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're always winning and we win. And they when they lose, we lose. You know? It's like we don't get that chance like to take exactly. it. You know? So it's going to be a battle. Are, yeah, the Red Sox are on a nine-game winning streak as of right now. And uh, tonight's game is going to have Corey Kluber against Luis Severino, the Yankees against the Cleveland Indians. And uh, Kluber's last uh, start, he did seven scoreless innings with three strikeouts and two walks, and he had a uh, no decision. Severino's last start, he uh, he is 2-1 and one with a 2.49 career earned run average against Cleveland in four starts. And uh, Severino's last start, he gave up three runs and five hits against Toronto and won his 14th game. So that's tonight's pitching matchup. Wow, that's a hell of an ERA. You said 2.49 ERA? Yes, it's a 2.49 career earned run average and four starts against the Indians. Yeah, and, but the, uh, the, uh, the Cleveland Indians, they're a, they're a tough team, though. Yes, they are. They're in a division that is not as strong as the West or the East. They are in the Central Division, and they really don't have talenters in that division, really. The other teams are basically rebuilding, and the Indians have a have a have have an easy road to winning that division the way I see it. Yeah, because uh, for a long time now, even since the days of Nick Swisher, when they... When the Yankees got rid of him and sent them to Cleveland, that since then the Cleveland Indians they've been like a sleeper team. Like, like they could make it to the playoffs, but they don't. Like every year, you know what I mean? Like, they always have that potential, man, and they always have some some real tough guys on that team. Exactly, and the Indians have not won a World Series since 1948, so you know they're hungry, yeah. and uh, and uh, that's where that stands now, and the Indians team is pretty good, they have uh, Kipnis, and Lindor, and Ramirez at third base, and they have Rajay Davis, and Michael Brantley, and Tyler Naquin, and of course Edwin Encarnacion as the as DH, and uh, they are always a tough team. And very strong in the central division. Yeah, they have an awesome team there, man. I mean, I mean, you just just the names that you mentioned, they're all awesome. Even Lindor, man, that's a hell of a guy too, man. That's a hell of a player, man. Puerto Rican too. Yes, exactly, exactly. 
and uh, Kipnis, of course, and Landor, and uh, Michael Brantley, Roger Davis, and Encarnacion is uh, really doing well at DH. And it's, he's uh, stood up uh, better than Bautista has, actually. Bautista is, is on the decline, but Encarnacion is still performing at a very high level for the Indians. Yeah, man, and, and it's so sad for the Mets, man, that the Mets, they have a, they had a great team, and then they're all hurt. The whole team is hurt. Yes, yes, the Mets have very strong pitching, but uh, but their hitting has been uh, rather poor. They've been uh, rather poor offensively, and they, the Mets got off to an 11-1 start, but have played well under 500 since, and have been a major disappointment for the New York Mets fans. Yeah, and it's so sad, too, because um, Adrian Gonzalez lost a job behind the Mets sucking, you know? Exactly, and I could give you the Yankees hitting statistics if you're interested. Would you like to hear them? Yeah, let me hear that. What's going on? Okay, they have played 91 games. They have 3,123 at-bats. They have scored 474 runs. They have 789 hits, 171 doubles. 12 triples, 154 home runs, wow. 300, 356 bases on balls. They do strike out a lot. They have struck out 826 times, and they have 39 stolen bases. And as a team, they are batting 322 with an on beat, uh, 253, I'm sorry. Their batting average is 253 as a team, and their on base percentage is 332, and they're slugging 463. And their OPS is 795. I looked that up because I knew I'd be talking to you yeah. tonight. You know, one one thing that you said there, you said the stolen bases are 39 stolen bases? Uh, 39. That's horrible. That means the Yankees run game, nobody... You know what? I don't even remember the last time uh, Brett Gardner even stealing a base. Exactly. Well, because they, they're a team that relies so heavily on the home run that uh, they feel if they try to steal a base that they could be giving up and out. And many times what's happening is Aaron Judge is batting right behind Brett Gardner. So if, uh, if uh, Gardner steals with Judge up, uh, Aaron Boone feels that that will take the bat out of Aaron Judge's hand and they will just walk him and put him on first. So with Aaron Judge uh, being the home run threat that he is, it has cut down on Brett Gardner's storm bases. That's that. Wow. Because, um, man, um, to the games I've been to live and to the games that I listen to on the radio, I haven't heard, like, you know, he steals the bag, like, and it's a big thing. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know, like the, like the turnaround of the game, people steal a bag, they get that exactly. run in. You don't hear that at all. So I guess the home run ball is destroying the Yankees. Could it be the the, the 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 kryptonite of the team? Well, I'm not going to complain. They're winning, but uh, they do rely heavily on the home run. And, uh, you know, sometimes it would be nice to see them uh, sacrifice and move a runner over and uh, hit a little bit better with runners in scoring position. Every, but, every, uh, every Yankee player is almost kind of slow. Yes, yes. Well, that's another actually, problem. We don't have a running game on the. We don't have a base running aggressiveness on the base pads. There, I'm looking. Exactly. There are teams that run less, but uh, but uh, they do have athletic players. But they, uh, the stolen base is not really part of the Yankees game that heavily. That's for sure. And they they are what is known as a slugging team, and they have set a record for the most home runs before an All Star break in the majors with 154. The second uh, closest team to them in home runs is, I believe, the Boston Red Sox with 130. So the Yankees do rely heavily on the home run, and they do strike out a lot as well. But uh, they are a very strong team, and they are winning with a very good record. So however they do it, they do it. I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I feel like Boone, Aaron Boone, the manager, um, He's going to have to start testing these waters and start sending yeah. guys when they get to first base. You know, I know not like Hick, not Hicks, not Judd, not, not Stan, because I know those guys are super slow. I'm talking about like, like the other guys, the Andors, 
and uh, you know, that's rough. He does run. His uh, stolen base percentage is not the greatest, but he does run. He's stolen 10 bases, and I believe he's been caught six times. But uh, he does run and try to take the extra base. I think that's the only guy we got there so far because everybody else, um, if you see it, they either, like you say, get a home run. They get a lot of doubles. You know, and it's either the double. They really don't have too many singles, right? Too many... Uh, Base well, for Tyler Wade right? is on the team. Tyler Wade has been called up from the uh, from the minors, and Tyler Wade is very fast, and he could be a stolen base threat. Man, you know the fastest Yankee I ever seen on the base path was Homer Bush. Wow, okay. Homer Bush that's going back to the eighties, nineties. Uh, uh, that's uh, yeah, uh, late nineties there, early two thousand. That guy was right. the fastest player I ever saw. He was wow. faster. He was faster than Ricky. He was faster than Ricky. And Ricky, Ricky is my favorite player of all time. And he's faster than Ricky. Oh my goodness! Well, Brett Gardner is still very fast, but many believe that Tyler Wade is now the fastest on the Yankees when he is up on the big team. And uh, Tyler Wade is extremely fast as well. Didi Gregorius has some decent speed. Brett Gardner is still. Very fast. He may have lost a step now that he's 35 years old, but he is still one of the fastest players in the maker. Talking about Brett Gardner, right? They're going to have his bobblehead coming out soon, right? Oh, cool. What do you think his bobblehead is going to look like? Well, I bet it, it will be, uh, it will be, hmm. I think he, they'll have him at bat where he's holding a bat and he's got his uh, helmet on. And uh, ready, ready to hit left-handed. That's what I thought too. But you know what? I really would like. I would like to see Brett Garner and his uh, stealing the base stance, like he yeah. normally always is. Right. You know. Right. That would be cool. Like uh, on first base, taking the lead. Yeah, that's what I. That's that's how I would like to see it. Him stepping off on first base. Excellent. Sounds good. But anyway, I, w I would say that uh, it's uh, getting close for us to have to end this one now because I have to go inside and uh, take care of some things. But I think that uh, this was a good uh, first podcast. Yeah, man. And, and uh, you get it going, and we'll see how it goes. Absolutely. So we'll end this here. This is the first one of many uh, on the, uh, the first inning. So... Um, I guess uh, we'll see you on the next uh, podcast. See you. See okay. you later, everybody. You want to say anything just to uh, to uh, to end it? Okay, I'll say. Uh, well, thank you very much, and it's always good to talk to my good friend Frank. And we'll talk again soon. That's it. See you later, folks.